we're out for a day hike today and we've brought Mozzie, our chocolate lab, with us. So she's getting to uh, try out her backpack a bit and uh, get used to carrying it again because we're going to be taking her camping soon. So uh, she's brought along one of her toys with her and uh, we're just off for a day hike. So the trail that we're on is um, called the Utah Trail. It runs from the city of Aurelia all the way through to a uh, community of Wabashim in Ontario. Um, that length of trail is 22 kilometers point to point and uh, it's for hiking, biking, I believe uh, horseback riding, uh, but no motorized vehicles on this section of the trail. So it's an old rail bed, so it's very flat and wide and a nice easy hike. So the section um, that we started in is in uh, actually, um, it's right near a pit uh, on the Utah line. There's a, a large uh, limestone quarry there uh, today, but it is the site of a ghost town. Uh, the ghost town was named uh, Utah. So conflicting reports are that the name Utah either comes from an area in Germany that it was named after, um, or a man by the last name of Utah from Germany. So <laughs> whichever it is, uh, the, uh, the area is uh, called Utah. Quarry is uh, referred to as the Utah Quarry. And this is the Utah line. So if you're trying to look that up, it's spelled, uh, it's spelled differently. So it's U-H-T-H-O-F-F. -F. So this is a very nice, nice walk, nice and flat, and we've had some bicyclers pass us, people walking their dogs as well. It's a very nice trail, mostly surrounded by farm fields. Uh, and then uh, it is actually part of the Trans-Canada Trail, so it's called the uh, Utah Trail in this section. And then once it gets to Aurelia, I believe uh, they call it, uh, or a section of it at least, is called the Lightfoot Trail there after uh, Gordon Lightfoot. And uh, all of that is part of the Trans-Canada Trail um, that crosses from one end of Canada to the other. Good girl. You can see some of the quarry from the trail. Uh, it's been in existence for a very long time. The quarry started out around uh, the beginning of the 1900s. Prior to that, uh, there was a lumber camp here. So 
There's a bit more background to this area, and it started out as a um, lumber mill. Uh, and that's why the train tracks were originally put through here to transport lumber. And then um, when the limestone was discovered, uh, then it became a gravel pit and they used the train tracks to transport the limestone. But of course they use uh, trucks for hauling that now, so the uh, railway tracks were all pulled up, I think in around the 1950s or 1960s, and uh, it's became a recreational trail now. So. Uh, when it was a lumber camp and then uh, a quarry and a railway yard, they had a community here um, and they had several houses, a church, uh, orange hall, uh, blacksmith shop, um, all that sort of stuff. And uh, all that's gone now, except apparently uh, the remnants of the orange hall. And so uh, later on, we're going to go and see if we can find that. Uh, that's uh, apparently the only thing that's left of the ghost town of Utah that used to be in this area. sound like a locomotive, don't you? Yes. And I actually found some of the old rail ties. So you see the old rail tie, or rail line here in this section. So did you bring your favorite toy with you today? Is that your monkey? She says, yeah, I brought my monkey. Good girl. Foundation here. This is all that's left of the ghost town of Utah. Foundation of the old Orange Hall. There you have it, folks. So the information I got for today's hike is out of a book called Ontario Ghost Towns. I'll, uh, I'll put the author's name up on the screen here. Um, but yeah, great little resource just to explore some of the area around you and get an idea of what used to be there. So until next time, Keep exploring.